Hey guys, welcome to Salty. We're so glad you decided to join us today. We're going to get going on a time of worship, so let's jump on in together into that, singing songs about our God and how great He is to us. Let's sing together. Well, welcome. How are we doing today? Would you stand with us if you're able? My name's Miles. If we haven't had the pleasure to meet, we're so glad that you joined us at Salty. Oh, oh, oh. 
God, we're thankful for that reminder. I pray that we would have ears and minds to believe that truth, that no matter what has happened in our past, that Jesus, you provided access. Let's sing to God. There was a moment when the lights went out, when death claimed its victory. The King of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. Forever could. 
Thanks so much for singing with us. We want to invite you, if you're new here, or if maybe you've been coming for a while and haven't taken that next step of connection with us to fill out our online digital connection card. That's a one-stop shop to get connected into the next steps of your faith journey with us here at Salty. Whether you're looking to join a group or you wanna find out what's happening next in your community through Salty Church, we encourage you to fill out that online digital connection card. You just go to salty.org and click on connect up at the top and that'll get you uh, moving forward on that connection card. We have many opportunities for you to get involved with the life of Salty Church. One of those is coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. That's Mother's Day. And on Mother's Day, we have a couple of things happening. One is we have baby dedications that are going to be taking place here. And if you've never done that before, what that is, simply put, is um, parents who want to walk their kids into that lifelong journey of what it means to follow Christ. And they're coming up to say, hey, publicly, we're going to do this. We're going to dedicate ourselves and our kids to walking them through a life in Christ. And as a church, it provides us an opportunity to pray for them in a public setting as they embark on that journey for many blessings in their family together. And so if you want to sign up for baby dedications, if you want to do that, you can go to salty.org forward slash events. Coming up, we're getting into that season of missions. And so we do missions both locally, but also globally. So check out this really awesome video from our campus pastor, Austin, for the New Smyrna uh, campus. Hey Salty, I'm Austin Trammell. I get to serve as campus pastor uh, for a New Smyrna Beach location. And I'm here today to talk to you about missions. I am so excited about missions. I love them. In the last year, I've been able to lead two of our amazing missions trips here at Salty Church one to the Dominican Republic and one to Costa Rica. And in the Dominican Republic, we got to actually be a part of the very first church service ever for Waves of Grace Church in Nagawa. And after that, we got to be a part of the first baptism. And while we were there, we got to paint a lot of local homes and connect with the local pastor. And our group grew so much closer together with one another and with God, it was an amazing trip. And this past March, just last month, I got to go and lead a team to Costa Rica. And this was a phenomenal trip. There we actually turned an old abandoned police station into a kids facility called CREO, which means Center for Recreation, Education and Opportunity. It also means I believe in Spanish. And so we got to work with our partners there and do amazing work. It was great for our team. And the best part I've learned about mission trips, the, the adventure, the traveling's great, the things you get to do and help other people with are awesome, but it's also about what you get to see. You get to see local pastors and local people live as Christians on mission in their community. And the best part is you get to take what you see there home with you. So I'd invite you to consider a missions trip and to see how you can be a missionary in your community. Go and learn from some of the best of the best and then take that home and share it with your neighbors and all of those around you. That's so awesome. Love to see the work that New Smyrna Campus is doing right there with Austin, but also you get to jump in and be involved with that as well. So if you want to um, join our team and join in on missions both locally and globally, you can go to salty.org, click on next steps, and then click on missions as well. So every week we take some time to connect with God and to connect with others as we continue our time of worship. And so what that looks like for you at home is we hope that you would drop us a line, leave us a comment, send us an email, something to let us know that you're tuning in, where you're tuning in from. Maybe you have a prayer request, you can send that our way and we have a team of people who will be praying together with you. Um, you can also take communion. Communion is simply recognizing the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. And so if you have some bread around or crackers that could represent the body of of Christ that was broken for you and maybe some juice or water to represent uh, his blood that was spilled on the cross and so you can do that with us we're doing it here in house and do it at home and join in with us and on that um, also this is also a time that we take uh, to give and so you know as you give Jesus says this in Matthew 6 and he says that where your treasure is there the desires of your heart also will be I don't think Jesus had anything against rich people or riches or any of that kind of stuff, but what Jesus was challenging us to was this idea that anything that comes between us 
in God is simply not good. And to, if, if treasure is the thing doing that, then give away the competition, right? And so we wanna encourage you guys to jump in on that as well. You can go to salty.org and click on give up at the top. And as you give, you're continuing on in this I'll go initiative, this I'll go journey that we're on together to go and make disciples for Christ. Your faith will continue to grow as well. So now thank you so much for your partnership with us as you do give. Now let's take some time to connect. Hey everybody, it's Robbie coming to you today via video. I've got a little announcement for you. I want to let you in on something. You remember that in early March, we started a year-long initiative called I'll Go. Part of that had a financial component to it. It's very missional as well. And I wanted to give you a bit of an update uh, regarding that effort. I'm on video today because I'm in El Salvador. You can probably see some of the scenery behind me. It's not Florida. And uh, I'm here as a part of our efforts working with Christian Surfers International and the Surf Church Collective. Uh, this is the regional conference that will be here in El Salvador coming up this week. I was privileged to be able to, uh, I got invited to speak at one of the main sessions on Thursday night. But as well, and maybe more importantly, I am uh, have an opportunity to be working with some of the key leaders here in El Salvador and El Tungo. And I'm going to be doing some training for a couple different churches. Really excited about that, helping them to plant churches, to make disciples, which is a key thing for churches like ours to be helping other churches do what God called us to do. So it's a big privilege. It's a great honor. And you get to be a small part of that. I wanted to let you know. And... Since I'm coming to you on video, obviously, and I'm in El Salvador, I'm not with you. So, we've got some guys lined up. You ready? So, if you're in New Smyrna, give it up for Austin Trammell. He'll be speaking with you today. And likewise, Flagler. You guys give it up for the awesome Jacob Netherton. And in Ormond Beach, we have Derek Shirley. So, we got a great team. We're better together. You guys are going to have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon. So, what's up, Salty? Good to see everybody. Good to be with you today, too, and the last few weeks we've been in this series called Start Here. My name is Derek. I'm one of the campus pastors here in Orland Beach, and glad to be with you. So the series Start Here started two weeks ago with the idea that when you're starting something, where do you start? Possibly here, right. So the first week, Robbie talked about, do you start with maybe what your parents taught you, whatever they taught you? Sounds good. Or maybe you start with the church, and that sounds good too, but a lot of people have been hurt by the church, you might say. Maybe you start with science, or maybe you start with like the Big Bang Theory, all right? Or maybe you start with the Bible, that sounds right. But just so you know, and he talked about it a little, the Bible's a great place to start. It's a great tool, if you will. But the Bible's not going to be like on a pedestal one day in heaven that they're all going to bow down to. But it's a great tool. So when you're starting to form the foundation of your faith, where's the best place to start? So that first week, Robbie talked about Jesus. The best place to start in your life is Jesus. Because Jesus said that when you start with him, he'll be the author and the perfecter of your faith. And then last week, Robbie talked about this dirty three-letter word, if you remember it, S-I-N, sin, right? 
that more than mistakers, more than just us making mistakes every now and then, that we're sinners, as Paul wrote it like in Romans 3.23, and he said, everybody has sinned and we've all fallen short of God's standard. So Jesus talks about sin and, and what it's done to your life and what it's done to my life, how sin breaks relationships, and sin breaks relationships with your family and with your friends, and how sin hurts you and, hurt, and hurts other people too. And then how sin actually breaks your relationship with God. So when Jesus comes on the scene, he starts talking about sin. Hear this. He didn't talk about sin to condemn us. He talked about sin to talk about the condition of our life and our brokenness and talk about restoration, being restored back to God. So here's the question for today. Have you ever broken anything? You ever broken anything? We break lots of things, right? Accidentally, it's a mistake. But I want to tell you a story about something that was broken in our family. So when Marcy and I first got married, she made that wedding list or whatever that gift list is. You ladies know where you, you say, hey, if you want to buy us a gift, this is what you buy. And, and so part of that, she had everyday wear china. And then she had fine china, Right? And some of you ladies might understand that. I don't really get that. But it was everyday wear, and then it was fine china. And this is what we were going to use. And the fine china was literally like plate and saucer and cup and forks and spoons and knives and you name it. It was just all the cut and caboodle together, and it was just a big, big thing. Crazy thing, this fine china was worth about 150 bucks a set. And we were asking for eight sets. Oddly enough, we have eight in our family now. Now, the oddity about this for me was um, I'm pretty much like a paper plate and plastic cup guy, right? Like, I love the paper plate, whoever invented it, because you eat on your paper plate, and then you just throw it in the trash, right? And I don't like glassware glasses, because I don't know why, but when I drink it, it like bangs on my teeth, and I don't like that. So I drink plastic cups. That's what I use. But every now and then when we get real fancy, you know, like with the kids, we get that plastic holder that you put under the paper plate. And that's like everyday wear for us. Like, I like that. And every now and then we'll pull out the everyday wear. It's in our cabinet next to the plastic bowls, next to the plastic cups. And when my mom or dad come over, we might pull it out or... When her mom comes over, we might pull it out and we'll use it. But we really don't use it but like once a week. It's not really everyday wear. So you might ask yourself, um, so what about the fine china? Well, we never, ever use the fine china. <laughs> ever. Nada. In fact, early on at some point, it got stuck in a china cabinet. And that's where it stayed, just to be looked at. I don't know why we do that in America, but we just look at this. But we do that. And then after a while, after about our fifth or sixth move, it didn't get taken out of the box. And it got stored in the attic. And that's where it stayed. And then one day, about 10 years ago, we were talking like, what are we, why, why are we carrying these boxes around? Why are we carrying this heavy weight around? Can't we just come to a point of agreeing to like sell it? You know, 150 bucks times eight. But now this was worth, I mean, we went online, this was worth like 250 bucks a setting times eight. That's like $5,000 or so. Well, wait a minute, 250 <laughs> times eight is, that's like $2,000 or so, right? So we're just thinking, like, yeah, let's sell this, sell, sell, sell. So I go up in the attic and I carry the boxes down real gently and I bring them out on the table in the kitchen and then we start sorting through it. And she puts everything together as a set. And, yeah, we've got it all here. It is right here. So what do we do now? And I said, well, why don't you take pictures of it and put it on Facebook Marketplace? And so that's what she did. And she took all the pictures, and it was beautiful. And now I will put it some, I don't know where, but how about in this corner shelf, bookshelf right here next to the table? Nothing's really on it. We can remove everything that is on it. And then I'll just gently, like, two steps here, put it up. Two steps here, put it up. It's kind of like we're in the money. I'm thinking the whole time, like Christmas is going to be good this year. And so everything's nice and in its plate right there. 
And then later that evening, Marcy's making dinner and she's finished. Hey, kids, it's dinner time. And all the kids come down to the table. And it's all good. And we're sitting around the table and we pray together. And then great conversation breaks out. You know, like, stop it. No, you stop it. No, you stop it. You st- hey, all of y'all just stop it and eat your dinner, right? And then one of my kids, and I'm not going to tell you who because I don't want to disclose who he is. Well, there you go. It was one of my boys. So it's one of my boys, not my girls. Used to get up from the table, and he'd just kind of run around the table. I was like, stop, 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 sit down. Sit down, boy. Finish your meal. So eventually he'd sit down, and he'd get up again. I'm like, okay, listen, if you don't sit down, I'm going to take my belt, and I'm just going to, like, strap you to the chair. And the kids were like, yeah, Dad, do it, do it. And so he got up again, and so I went over, I strapped him to the chair, and he's wiggling around, and finally he calms down, he finishes his meal, and all is good. And this one night, once again, he got up and made his way around the table. Hey, listen, Jesse, we, oh, sorry about that, yeah, yeah, just ignore that, John, listen, John, will you stop running around the table, sit down before I take off my belt and strap you around your chair. And so he made his way around the table one more time, and he just happened to stop right there at the makeshift china cabinet, leaned back, and you heard this. And we were all sitting around the table like, no, 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 no. Oh, and it just all just came tumbling down. $2,000 gone. And there was nothing, literally nothing we could do to stop it. So listen, every time you sin, we talked about that last week. Every time I sin, this world becomes more and more broken, just like that fine china. And most of the time we feel like there's nothing we can do to fix it. So the question is, where do you start to restore that brokenness in your life? Where do you start? Because we all know this, brokenness is hard and it's heavy. And it produces wounds and scars in our body that most of us carry around every single day in every situation we're in, in every conversation we go to, in every environment we go to. We carry these wounds and these scars with us. And there's no Band-Aid large enough to put on that boo-boo, right? Those wounds and those scars. And just like those china plates just slipping off and cracking on the ground, there are times when we really feel like our life is just slipping away, relationally and emotionally and mentally, financially, physically. We just can't seem to stop it. And we just wander in our own mess and our broken pieces. So what does your brokenness look like? In your life, what does your brokenness look like? Like what are the wounds and the scars that that you carry with you? Because here's the reality. With the introduction of sin into all of humanity, God was left with a choice. Now catch this. God had a choice to either turn his back on our mess and say, you deal with it, you got it, Or he could choose to turn into and wade into our brokenness and our mess. And I'm here to tell you, thank God that God chose to wade into your brokenness and my brokenness and your mess and my mess. And here's what's interesting about God's starting point, if you will, of wading into humanity's brokenness and mess. It started with a particular man that you probably have heard of before, no matter you know, how much church background you have or how little church background you have or, or, or how much you know about the Bible or how much you don't know about the Bible. He started and waded into humanity's mess with this one man you've probably heard of whose name is Abraham. Say his name with me. Abraham. Right, Abraham was the starting point of God wading into our mess 
and our brokenness. And here's what's interesting. Now follow here. It's interesting that Christianity and Judaism and Islam, Robbie talked about them a little last week, these three major religions all agree that somewhere in the beginning, God created a wonderful thing, and then we came along and basically messed it up. We all kind of agree on that. And it's also interesting that Christianity and Judaism and Islam all agree that God began, if you will, the cleanup process of humanity's brokenness with Abraham. So let me give you a little history, and and let's talk about Abraham as we wander into this. Because Abraham is a significant figure in the Bible and is known really throughout world history as the father of faith. Throughout history, he's known as the father of faith. And just for the sake of time, his name was Abram at one time, and God changed it to Abraham. But for the sake of time, we're just going to call him Abraham. He was the father of faith. That's the title that he holds. Now listen, because of his response to God. So in Genesis 12, we find this conversation that God is having with Abraham. And God offers Abraham these three huge, prob- or huge blessings in his life. Huge blessings. Huge promises. And the conversation goes a little like this. Genesis 12, verse 1, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Abraham, leave your country, your family, and your father's house, and go to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bring good to you. I will make your name great, so you'll be honored. And I will bring good to those who are good to you, and I will curse those who curse you. Goodwill will come to all the families of the earth Because of you. And so Abraham left as the Lord told him to do. Now when we pick it up here in his story, Abraham's about 75 years old. Sarah's about, his wife is about the same age, a little younger though. So he takes Sarah, his wife, and a nephew Lot, and some family and friends, and they go off on this journey because God promises Abraham these three huge promises. So let's go through them one at a time. So God promises Abraham land and that he would be a great nation. Land and that he would be a great nation. Now the only problem with that is Abraham didn't have any land. He probably didn't know what a great nation was. And the journey that he was about to take was towards Canaan. Canaan was occupied with people at the time. And Abraham didn't have an army to fight them and take the land, if you will. It's interesting to note, too, that Canaan and today is known as Israel. And so problem number one, like how is he going to get this land and how is he going to be a great nation? Second promise God made to Abraham was that he would make his name great. Like your name's going to be great, Abraham. Now the only problem with that is think about it, social media, TikTok didn't exist. Nobody really knew of Abraham. And the people that really only knew him were the ones that were his family and friends in his small little circle. So how's his name going to be great? And then the third promise, the blessing that God said he was going to give him was blessings. God promised Abraham blessings. That his name would be great and that all the people of the earth would be blessed, listen, because of him. But again, another problem at this point, what does he have to give? He has really nothing. He has no land. He has very little family because Abraham and Sarah have no kids at 75. So these are like big promises that God says I'm going to give you. And Abraham is just thinking, I don't get it, but okay, I'll go. And now to make matters worse, 25 years pass. And Abraham and Sarah and Lot and his family and his friends are still wandering, looking for this land that God promises him. 25 years pass. Abraham is not 75 anymore. He's now 100. There you go. There you go. 100 years old. 
Sarah's older now too. Probably not able to have kids at all. And so we find Abraham in this this morning and struggle with God, basically saying, what happened, God? I'm old and I'm dying. I have no kids and anything that I do have, the little that I do have is probably going to go to somebody else. I don't understand. And in Genesis 15, God responds to him and says this. Check this out. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram, Abraham in a special dream saying, don't be afraid. I am your safe place. And your reward will be very great. And then Abraham said to him, O Lord, what will you give me? For I have no child. And the one who is to receive what belongs to me is Eliezer of Damascus, the little that I do have. Abraham said, Because you have not given me a child, one born in my house will be given all that I have. And then the Lord said to him, This man will not be given what is yours. I love that. But he who will come from your own body will be given what is yours. And God takes him outside and said, Now look up into the heavens and add up the stars if you're able to even number them. And then he said to him, Your children and your children's children will be as many as the stars. And this is the starting point For God to restore Abraham's brokenness and his mess. And check out this next verse. And then Abraham believed in the Lord. And that made him right with God. Now check this out. Then Abraham believed what God said. And everything changed. And here's what's really cool. Today, 2023, what's really amazing about this starting point of Abraham's belief to believe, all the promises that God made Abraham came true. Now watch. Today, Abraham is known and has the title of the father of faith because he believed. And today, Israel And many Arab nations claim Abraham as their father of faith. Nations claim him as their father. What's interesting is that today in 2023, TikTok's pretty big, but who's even bigger? The name of Abraham. The name of Abraham is known worldwide, and here we are, 4,000 years later, talking about Abraham. Abraham, because God made his name great. And what's even more interesting is most Jewish men and women and children say they are better off because of Abraham. And most Arab nations trace their heritage all the way back to Abraham. And most Muslims hold Abraham in high, high regard. And here's what's really powerful, and don't miss this. Abraham's lineage, his family bloodline, leads to Jesus. Now, that's amazing. Three promises that he really never saw, every one of them came true because he believed. Could it be that simple? Believe. In his own confusion and messiness and 25 years of waiting and not seeing some of the promises that God made him, Abraham believed God and it made him in right standing with God. So listen, could it be, now this is where we connect the dots, could it be the next step in your faith journey is believe. Like no matter if you just gave your life to Christ, or maybe you gave your life to Christ a year ago, or 10 years ago, or 50 years ago, or maybe you've never given your life to Christ, could it be that your next step is simply believe? 
that you've experienced all the brokenness in your life that you can experience. And things are hard for you. And challenges are there every single day. And life has beaten you up and you feel the brokenness and you're tired and you've put your hopes and dreams, if you will, on the shelf. Could it be that you're just at a place where you say, God, I want to experience you more. I want to feel the restoration in my life that you promise. Could it be your next step is to believe? Believe that God wants to step into your brokenness and your pain, in my brokenness and my pain, and God wants to put us in right standing with him because of Jesus, and God wants to bless our life. I have the privilege, as some of you do too, to baptize people here at Salty, and it's simply amazing. It's amazing to see the life change take place. And what's even more amazing is recently, I've had the privilege to baptize families. Like father or mother decides to follow Christ, and the son and the daughter, or the two sons and the daughter decide to, hey, we want to follow Christ too. That has changed their future. That has changed, if you will, their lineage, because they started to believe. Then Abraham believed in the Lord. That made him right with God. Romans 4, verse 18 says, Even when there was no reason for hope, the odds were stacked against him. Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, That's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, He figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. And Abraham never wavered in believing, believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever God promised. And because of Abram's faith, God counted him as righteous. Now watch this. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we, what? Believe in him. The one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, he was handed over to die because of our sins. And he was raised alive to make us right with God. Listen, something happens supernaturally when you take that step and believe. Everything changes. And no matter what mess you've made, no matter how difficult it feels, the God of this universe chooses to wade into your mess. So at the end of our teaching time, we take just a few moments, about a minute and a half, just to think about what you've heard. Let God continue to speak to you. Maybe it's that step you need to take to simply believe. So what if the next step of your life was trusting God? Think about these two questions. What would that look like? And what is the obstacle keeping you from trusting God? Take just a few moments. I'll come back up, pray for us. And we'll get home.
just want to remind you, Wednesday nights right here we have starting point. It starts at 6.30 to 8 o'clock and we meet around at tables, talk about what we just talked about and apply it to our life, taking that deeper step of faith. So I just want to challenge you this week, wherever you are in your faith journey, maybe it's just as simple as believe. Let me pray for you and we'll be finished. God, thank you so much. Thank you so much that you waded into our mess, God. Thank you that you love us and care about us. And I pray for every man and woman and child across all of our campuses, God, that you reveal that to us, where you want us to believe and trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a great weekend. We'll see you. Bye-bye.